This is a tale of two Atessas. One is simple and straightforward. The other is a little bit more complex. Both are beautiful. Both are well put together. Both are capable of delivering great sound. Both are worth a listen. This was supposed to be just a review of the Roxanne Atessa Integrated Amplifier. And I had that unit for a short time until I noticed that there was a slight hum or hiss coming from the right side speaker. So I let the folks who supplied me that amplifier know of my issue and they took that amplifier back to run some tests and see what the issue was. And in the interim, they supplied me with the streaming version of the amplifier. Out with the old and with the new. So for me, that's kind of a bonus and I'm not gonna complain about that. Both of the amplifiers are exactly the same. Both are 80 watts of channel into 8 ohms and 130 watts of channel into 4 ohms. They look exactly the same as well. It's only when you flip the amplifiers around to the back that you notice any difference. The integrated amplifier has connections for two speakers, moving magnet, phono input, two analog ins, one with the ability to be put into AV mode, pre-out, sub, four digital inputs, two coaxial and two optical, Bluetooth, oh, and of course, the 3.5 millimeter headphone output. The streaming version sports a little bit extra. It has a network input, two USBs, one for the Wi-Fi dongle and the other for a thumb drive with music on it. Streaming is handled by Blue Oz. I think it's really cool that in an amplifier lineup, both amps have the same power. The only difference between them is functionality. Unlike a lot of times where the higher spec amplifier has more power and the lower spec amplifier kind of pulls back a few features so that if you want those features, you have to get the higher powered one, which you don't necessarily need. The design itself is gorgeous. Well, to me anyway. I can see how it's a little bit divisive. Hard edges, clean corners, bright amber LEDs, it lends to a masculine appearance. Personally, I was more than happy to show this off on a shelf or on a sideboard for everyone to see. The slimline and symmetrical chassis looks great. Dead center is a multifunction knob, which if I'm being perfectly honest, I didn't use a heck of a whole lot. I turned to the remote for most of the functionality. I just didn't find it to be overly useful. The testers are finished in either silver or black, and this is one of those rare instances where I actually prefer the black unit over the silver. And I think it's because there's a thin horizontal black strip on the face of the unit, and I feel like it fits better on the black unit itself. Unless you like contrast and then silver all the way. I feel like the LEDs play a part in this. Roxen went with bright amber LEDs, which if I'm being honest, wouldn't have been my color of choice. White or at least a muted blue would have been better in my opinion. The bright amber LEDs make this amplifier look a little bit more imposing or at the very least intimidating. They sort of remind me of the Guardian robot from the day the Earth stood still. The LEDs on the left indicate source selection and on the right volume. You can at the very least customize the icons via the Meister app that you use to set up this amplifier. That's the remote. It's a nice small afterthought of a remote. It reminds me a lot of the remote for the Fluence AI61. Uh, it's got everything you need on it. Uh, power, mute, source selection, volume, like what else do you need? Setup for the integrated amplifier anyway is really easy. You open the box, plug in all your sources, plug it into the wall, you're off to the races. It's only the streaming amplifier that gave me some headaches and it's only because I have a penchant for not reading the manual and that bit me in the ass on this one. You get it unboxed, you have to connect the Wi-Fi dongle to get it set up to your network where you have to download the Maestro Connect app to do so and then the Maestro Connect app will prompt you to download the Blue Oss app and then that's where everything would fall apart for me. It just wouldn't connect to my network, Blue Oss wouldn't connect. It was a huge pain in the ass a self-inflicted pain in the ass. And it wasn't until I contacted the folks that sent me the amp, was just like, listen, this isn't connecting, something's wrong with this amp. And they were like, did you download the firmware? You know how the manual tells you to download firmware if it's available. And if you look on the website, it clearly states download the firmware. So I downloaded the firmware, everything worked first time, no problem. Just read the manual 
follow some instruction when you're doing this. It'll save you a ton of headaches and I'm an idiot. Off the top, I gotta admit, Blue Oz isn't my favorite. And I'm a bit biased because I use the Cambridge CXN streamer as my daily driver. I just find the UI and the access to internet radio station so much easier. Uh, but I know some folks swear by Blue Oz, so, you know, tomato, tomato, I guess. I ended up using both amps as integrated for the most part. I only really use Spotify or the aforementioned internet radio stations for the most part. My NAS lies dormant most of the time and I only break it out for these reviews. To be honest, it's more of a pain than a pleasure to use and I'd much rather just run vinyl. Speaking of vinyl, the ground connection is really close to the speaker terminals on the back of the amp. Now, I got baby hands so it's no problem for me but if you got like sausage fingers, you might have a bit of a problem. Vinyl works perfectly when paired with the Cambridge Alva V2 turntable. The only big miss for me is the lack of tone controls. With amplifiers this well spec'd, it kind of boggles my mind that tone controls aren't included. I actually have a few amplifiers in the pipeline right now for review and all of them lack tone controls. And it's just like, what, why? Like, tone controls are the most tactile and engaging thing on an amplifier, like where you get the most feedback right away where you can augment the tonality of the music coming out to suit your liking. And I get that within this uh, mid tier, I guess, of amplifiers where they're targeting more of the audiophile that audiophiles want like uh, transparency and like true to life sound. I feel like the general consumer wants to just hear their music sound great. And if you have a poor recording or I don't know, if maybe everything isn't set up perfectly and you're not sound treating your room and all these things that, you know, being able to plump the bass or turn down the treble a touch really, really helps out. And I don't know, it just, it hurts my brain that tone controls aren't included. I do wonder if tone controls can be added in or maybe like basic EQ settings via an app or something like that after the fact to maybe add a bit more functionality in, but I really would like to see tone controls added into like all products going forward. Cause like, it's kind of a deal breaker for me. I normally don't subscribe to break in, but in this case, break in that amp. This amp sounded completely different after about a week or two. Now that could be the amp warming up, or admittedly, that could be my ears getting conditioned to the sound of this amplifier. Either way, it took a week or two. I'm gonna completely avoid talking about amplifier sound because if you've watched any of my previous videos, I'm horrible at it. What I will say is music sounded great through the Roxana Tessa. There's just more like oomph in the sound, especially when compared to my NAD 326BEE or my Cambridge Audio CXA60. Not in weight, but in scale. Everything just sounded bigger and more grand. I didn't notice anything from track to track. It was just more of an overall sense of scale, if that makes sense. Also control. It reminded me a lot of my old Arkham 280 receiver where it had a tighter grip on the sound altogether, especially in the bass, which is in some ways a good thing if you like the refinement or a bad thing if you're like me where you like a little less control and you like flabbier boosted bass. The Atessas were sent through with the Monitor Audio Silver 107 G speaker for the speaker pairing but I took the liberty of pairing them with the Silver 300 speaker that I have in previously for review. My BMW 685 poking it in the background there. The Q Acoustic 3030i and for a short time, the Wharfdale Evo 4.2 speakers. Starting off with the 685s, if you ever do upgrade your amplifier and you got a pair of entry level speakers kicking around and you like the way they sound, give those a whirl first. With the BMWs connected to the Roxanne, like everything just sounded better. Uh, the mids were more focused, the bass was tighter, the overall presentation was just better overall. It's like the extra power really does help. Ditto for the 3030Is. 
Their larger cabinets allow for greater scaling when paired with an amplifier with a bit more grunt. Similar to the 685s, but with a smidge more rolled off on the top, which in my specific use case is great when an amplifier lacks tone controls. The Silver 300 also gained that better sense of scale and soundstage and overall better refinement. Though I find that modern audio speakers do come in a little bit hot on the highs and I generally turn down the treble on my Cambridge amplifiers to compensate for this. I don't have that luxury with the Roxon, so yeah, I had to find a better solution for that. My solution was bringing both the Silver 100s and 300s down to my studio basement and connecting them to my turntables where I can augment the sound to my liking, which, maybe not the most audiophile solution, works really well for me. For the Silver 100s in particular, Admittedly, I have a bit of a bias with this speaker. I have a bit of a history with it as I own the Silver RX2 speaker. And I love the way that speaker sounds, especially with my NAD 326BE. So I just naturally preferred that speaker with that amplifier, but it does sound really good with the Roxin and it actually does scale up better with the Roxin over the NAD. I just, I, I don't know, I just like the sound of the NAD overall. I mentioned some other amps I have in for review. Those are the Audiolab 9000A, the Cambridge CXA81, and the Mission 778X. For the purposes of this comparison, I'm gonna omit the Mission amplifier because it's a little bit outgunned and it wouldn't really be fair. The other two are a bit more similar. And while all of these amps have a slight variation in sound characteristic overall, they're more similar than not. And if you were to try to choose between these amplifiers, just superficially it would come down to shelf appeal functionality and really brand loyalty because they're all fairly similar and they're all really great and unless you a b them with measurements or a more refined ear than mine you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between them both of the roxanne atessas are well built and more importantly great sounding amplifiers and i think it's really cool that Within an amplifier lineup, you have two that are essentially the same and you don't have to sacrifice the power if you don't want to go for the better spec option. Both are worth a listen. If I was to pick, I would most likely go for the integrated amplifier because I have a streamer already, but options yours. <laughs>